Hello my friends, welcome back to another tutorial. I hope you're all keeping very, very well out there and painting some wonderful, wonderful paintings. Um, right, this week I'm going to paint a nice simple scene and I'm almost going back to basics with oils. So if you're just beginning with oils, this is a very good tutorial for you. It's just a lovely little cottage, an Irish cottage with some uh, rough kind of hills going up on the background. Um, some lovely, lovely bright colour, very simplistic but very eye-catching colour. Um, so a nice little cottage, some nice kind of a yellowy grass um, sort of a field in front, some hills going up in the background. Nice and simple, but I think you'll really enjoy this. Some nice basic techniques, just a, a couple of colours, a couple of brushes, and we'll create something really wonderful. So I hope you can join me and stay with me and watch, and you might learn a few things along the way. And we have a bit of fun as well. So let's go. Let's have a bit of fun with this. Don't go anywhere. Okay, there's a reference photograph for you. A uh, nice simple scene, I think, but very colourful and very eye-catching. So I'll tell you what colours I have today. Titanium white, Naples yellow, magenta, phthalo blue, cadmium yellow pale, burnt cyana, burnt umber, and lamp black. There we go. I have some thinners with a little linseed oil as well. Just a tiny amount. I have um, a 12, it's not a 12 by 12, 16 by 16 canvas. I think that's what it is, 16 by 16. Not primed. It's a good quality canvas, so I don't think I need to prime it. Plus, we don't have a big sky, so we don't really need to oil the canvas or anything like that. We can just paint straight on. I'm going to take a small pointy brush and just do a quick little sketch with some burnt umber, just a very quick sketch to give us a little bit of a reference point. That's all we need. Um, I'll go across the bottom first. I'm going to go slightly higher with my land, just by the cottage. And um, I'll, I'll draw the cottage in, I think. So I'm going to come in a fair bit now to allow for the frame, okay? I have a picture frame on this. So I'm going to come in a good bit. I'm going to go here. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. It's only a little cottage. So you don't have to get this absolutely perfect, all right? Go across like that, we go down a bit like that. Um, we don't have to go too big. Up like that and then down like that, okay? Just a very rough reference for us. That is all we need. Maybe just one line from here going up the mountain high like that we can put this one in later so that's it that's all the sketching we need to do nice and simple isn't it let's get us a brush i'm going to go for this kind of a brush um i just bought a set of these they're just cheap flat soft synthetic brushes i purchased a set of these in the art store um just relatively inexpensive any soft big brush will do fine let's dampen that and let's go up and make a nice grey for the sky. Some lamp black with some thinners. And titanium white. You'll see immediately when you start putting titanium white into this, it gets very thick all of a sudden, doesn't it? Little more thinners just to thin this out. I want a nice creamy substance. A little touch of phthalo blue. Tiny, tiny touch. You see how strong that phthalo blue is? It goes really strong, doesn't it? And... I'm thinking maybe just to warm the scene slightly, a touch of magenta. Let's have a look. That's not bad. Go a bit lighter, perhaps. Little touch more blue. Always with the initial painting, the first stages of painting, especially with the sky, it takes time to get the colour you want just right. So I'd always take my time mixing the colour for the sky because the sky will kind of determine the colours you use in the rest of your painting because you know depending on how much light you have up in your sky and in your clouds that's going to have an impact on what you're painting you see so I tend to try and get this colour just right and I can complement the rest of the painting then from this so if it's a kind of a bluey pinky sky, you can complement your painting with blues and pinks. If it's a dark blacky grey sky, you can complement your painting with dark greys here and there as well. So it's probably, for me, 
the sky is probably the most important part of the painting when you're starting because that tells you where you're going from that point on color wise that gives you a sort of a reference for mixing colors as you're going along in your painting so you don't want very contrasting colors in the sky and your and your fields or your landscape or whatever it is you're painting you don't want very con contrasting colors because it just won't look right so i just put a bit of a warm gray a little bit of like blue bring that down very loosely you see how loose i'm being with this just throw it on lash it on as they say in here in ireland lash it on there you go done nice color on there i'm just going to now add a little bit of white here and there for some cloud so pick up a little bit of white just paint no thinners and let's just go let's just go for it look scrape some cloud on very rough very very generous with your paint look just throw it on there very very loosely don't be too concerned about where the paint is going we're going to be softening all of this later on so not to worry in the least no worrying at all with this just have a bit of fun that's all okay a bit of fun look just put it on leave it like that soften soften with a soft brush now i do get a lot of questions about this brush my soft blender brush and i'm going to let you into a little secret all right many of you probably know this already but it's just a makeup brush okay that's it a foundation brush i took this from my wife's makeup box i didn't tell her i know i should have but i didn't i won't say nothing if you don't so let's keep it a secret between us if you're looking for a soft blender brush your partner's makeup box is the best place to go you will get every selection of soft brushes in there and they have so many i don't think they'll even know this is missing so you didn't hear it from me that's my sky finished a simple sky let's move on to that mountain coming up there it's going slightly darker isn't it so let's start with some phthalo blue some magenta i like to start with the purpley tones first and work work in darker colors then i get some white i don't need to put thinners in this because this sky is fairly wet already otherwise it's getting too wet so just thick paint on its own look and more magenta more white i'm not going too dark with this dark enough but not too dark and i'll take a little touch of black what i'm aiming for here is a dark kind of a purpley a, purple, a warm purple so i'm taking a touch of cyanide i'm aiming for a kind of a very warm a kind of a mauvey warm color i'm just going to put this in loosely okay just like that give it a little bit of a wiggle here and there and it comes out of the painting doesn't it and i'm not copying this reference photograph now exactly okay i'm not it's just a reference photograph i want to put in my own maybe i want to put in my own colors my own shapes here and there and that's fine but i'm not meticulously copying every shape and angle of the photograph i'm going to take some burnt sienna and some magenta and a little white and i want to put this lovely warm color through some of this because it complements the front color then you see we have this kind of color on the front don't we so i want to pop a little bit of this through this one as well and that will help complement the closer hill if you know what i mean so just popping a little bit of it through it sort of it blends them together slightly they're not kind of sticking out too much if you understand so just a little bit of that you see tiny tiny bit then i'm going to soften this upwards into the sky as if there's a mist kind of descending down on on the hill like that you see and i'm going to just soften these through give that a quick clean take some white with that kind of cyanide color in it just it's mostly white come down here and let's soften that out into the land below as well so it's softening away you see lots of mist 
along the hills and they're all kind of disappearing and softening here and there you don't have to go wild with this now just it's just a, an impression that's all i want to get a nice little impression okay now we can also put a little dark into this to let's imagine there's i don't know little bits of rocks and all that kind of thing it's a very rocky sort of a hill so we could put a few little flicks of rocks in here as well look i'm just literally losing the edge of my brush and i'm just flicking it sideways like this even with the corner as well that gives you lovely random kind of shapes you see that very random full of randomness and it disappears up and depending on what mood you're in you can if you like soften all of this in with the blender brush again it's completely up to yourself or you can leave it i'm going to soften up there i think that would be nice just soften very gently down and then come down to the end soften it again because what you're doing is you're adding a little atmosphere to your painting that's all we're trying to do atmosphere or apt atmosphere as they say right we're on to this section i hope i'm making this nice and simple for you now it's just a, a few colors so far i'm going to go with some burnt sienna and i'm going to make a good mix here now a nice big mix of this because we have a lot to paint burnt sienna some magenta and then i'm thinking maybe a touch of black but i'm putting plenty and plenty of magenta into this it's a very pinky brown so then i'm going to take some white and that's going to soften everything up and make it nice and pastel kind of a shade very pastelly if you understand now let me just have a look at that i want to soften it a bit more so i'm going more magenta and a touch more black i just want to kind of knock the stone to a sort of it's almost a pinky gray with a kind of a brown put through it do you know what i mean so just keep adding touches of black and you're getting a very warm browny kind of a gray color a very neutral color so look let's just go and put that in here remember just give it a bit of a wiggle here and there look because i don't want it to be completely flat i don't want a sharp edge all the way up and soften this in again see nice soft color up there softening down from that high mountainous area softening down and then to into this blacky color here now we have a nice gray kind of a color don't we nice it's kind of a nice soft gray and there's a bit of brown in there as well so that's kind of the color i'm aiming for it's a very neutral landscape this and here in ireland all our landscapes tend to be like this they're very kind of neutral and soft that's what i love very soft neutral colors you know it it's very difficult to find very rich bright green landscapes in ireland there there is a lot of green there but because we don't get the sunlight as much as we would like um the greens that you'd see in ireland are very sort of dull greens there's a lot of gray in the shades of greens so everything becomes very sort of neutral a neutral kind of a shade now i just look a bit of white into that there I just want to soften a bit of white through that but if you're considering coming to ireland for a little holiday or whatever i would definitely suggest you go up around the ring of kerry and up around the wild atlantic way because that's where the hidden gems of the landscape are the wild atlantic way all up on that side you get these beautiful kind of real old ireland landscapes cottages up in the hills and all that kind of thing and it's very inspiring for a painter it really is now black magenta and a touch of burnt umber perhaps i'm going for this kind of a plummy a plummy kind of a gray shade and i'm going to use my palette knife i think as well maybe to add some texture onto this landscape this hill 
go around our cottage a little bit just very quickly very loosely even though this is a very simple looking landscape there's not a lot in the actual landscape but a painting like this really can catch your eye because it's just a cottage the cottage will really stand out against this background and the colors are what catch my eye in this landscape that rich yellowy color against those browns it's just very eye-catching it really is now um naples yellow burnt umber and a touch of magenta you can see i'm kind of fighting with the canvas a little bit as it's a little bit dry because it's such a big area but the thing about oils is once you get your initial first layer your thin layer on after that it's easy it's just a case of laying colors on top so now you can see the way i kept the direction of my brush coming down like this okay that's very important now let's take some naples yellow and let's try a touch of burnt sienna and i'm going to pop some light through this there and there again just scraping the brush you can see again i'm following the angle and the lie of the land that's very important you must follow the direction of the land coming down and going up so that's telling you these simple brush strokes will tell you which way the land is kind of running and that's very important in a painting very important to, because that tells the eye the story it tells the eye what's going on and which is which direction is going in so don't forget that a lot of people will just come along and go like this but follow the land just imagine you're there looking at the land and you can see the land coming 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 down like that and you know going across at the bottom and it's all starting to slowly come to life then isn't it now i'm going to put my brush down and grab a palette knife i'm thinking this type of a knife for this for this job and i think i'll go with first some naples yellow a little touch of cadmium yellow and some burnt sienna i'm going for a very rich color in this i'm not mixing it too much i'm leaving it slightly marbled okay uh, maybe a bit of white i'm just being cautious because i want this to be kind of off in the distance as well i want to push it off into the distance if you go too rich and bright with your colors you're bringing them forward but i want to push this off into the distance but still give it some color i'm just going to drag it across here and there with the flat of the knife just to give it some texture if you feel you overdid it then it's very easy just to kind of rub your knife along and almost soften it back in again very very simple to do look you see just try it so let's say just give it a try but you can see how quickly you can create some lovely texture in a painting when doing this it just really transforms your landscape very very quickly and easily it's a nice easy way of doing rough texture on a hill for example So I have that done. I'm going to start putting in some dark colours. You see these little rocks and things like that. Let's grab some burnt umber. I'll grab some magenta and a little black. Now plenty of pink in this again. I'm adding plenty of pink into every mix because it's giving you that warm undertone of a painting. And you see i'm just going to maybe take a touch of naples yellow just to slightly lighten this ever so slightly really i'm going to just pop some impression of just rough areas could be rocks and all that kind of stuff kind of popping down from the top here and there and i'll give these a little detail then very soon a little bit of light on them etc but just for now Use your palette knife and just drag some rock here and there. Remember and try to say this in your mind all the time when you're painting. Impression. 
It's just an impression, that's it, nothing else. I'm not trying to paint every individual rock in this. Just tell yourself that. I'm just letting the viewer look and make up their own minds. And I love that kind of air of mystery in painting. You're letting someone look at your painting and they're deciding, is it a rock? Is it something else? Um, that's what I like. I'm taking a touch of phthalo blue with white and magenta. Okay. And I want to take that kind of a light color and just pop a little touch of light here and there onto some of those. Just that's almost kind of letting the, the knife drag it off here and there. You're just creating a little bit of light catching some of the rocks. Not too much. Not I'm not going crazy, you know, just a little touch of it here and there. Soften it image or knife and just you see what I mean? Just have fun. A little bit of fun with this. Come on. Now I'll stop at that. Sit back and take a look. And what I'm going to do is very gently soften some. Just here and there. Running my brush over some of them. Just the odd one. I'm not going over everything. I just want to keep some of the lights as they are. But just sort of softening some in here and there. That gives it a nice sort of a misty feel. And again, it pushes everything back into the distance. You see? Very, very loosely. And that's all I'm going to do with that. See how quickly we've achieved the top half of this landscape. In literally, I don't know, 20 minutes, something like that. Isn't that just amazing? I think I'll do some trees down here. We have a lovely row of trees going along down here. Let's try some trees. Again, I'm going to use this flat brush first. I might then pop onto a fan brush or something like that. Let's first create a nice rich green. Cadmium yellow. Phthalo blue. Now that is like a sort of a viridian green out of a tube, isn't it? It's a bit rich for me. What we want to do now is dull this down. Let's try some burnt umber. We're kind of dulling it down, but warming it at the same time. Now, that's not bad. I want to mix a nice thick mix of this. And I maybe take a touch of black. So we have what seems like a nice rich olive green sort of a hue. With that on the tip of your brush, you see the way my brush is nice and flat. I'm just going to start by getting some of the tips of the trees like that, okay? This is just basically sort of getting the layout right before I continue on. Just getting some of the tips of the trees in first before continuing on. Now I could perhaps use a fan brush as well. That would also work quite nicely. Um, for this kind of a big one here, we have a nice big kind of blackish one here, don't we? I'm going to go maybe like this first. And you can see the kind of the problem I'm having is it's mixing with the color underneath, isn't it? But we're really only trying to get an impression in all of this, a very loose impression. So I'm just going to keep going like this, getting the uprights in first. Let's get some nice cadmium yellow in there as well. And slowly but surely, they will start to take shape. Now, if it's easier for you, you can just leave the background dry completely. I'm just going to go over here and just fill in that area. Let's imagine there's just a thick clump of 
greenery over there. Um, but you can leave the background dry if you like for a while. If that makes it easier for you. And of course you also have the option of using a fan brush as well. I'll come back then later and put some nice lights on all of these. And just come down and sit them down. I'll again get some black and just imagine there's stuff, just some kind of bushes and all that kind of stuff as well down at the end. Now I think what I might do is maybe with a different smaller brush get some nice rich dark ones. With a smaller brush it just gives you a little bit more control that's all it is really. Uh, some sienna in there and let's just go like that very random just very random okay don't be again don't be too concerned about making all of this look perfect and exactly like trees uh, some people do love to spend ages and ages spending tree painting trees I don't particularly like taking too long on trees. I just like to create a nice simple impression of trees. I'm just going to dab that now just along here and there. Let's go up here like that. I'm just creating a nice little impression of a rough kind of a overgrown area just along the bottom there. That's all I want to do. I clean that brush then and I'm going to go into some very rich yellows. I'm going to take some cadmium yellow and a touch of Naples yellow. And I'm now going to just go in and pop a little bit of light on some of these here. Look. You see, just a little touch. And I'm not putting the light in any particular area. I'm just kind of dabbing it around. Just to give the trees a bit of life, that's all. Because if I paint just a simple green tree, it will tend to just disappear and look flat. So I'm just putting a little few lights here and there just to give it a little, that extra little bit of lift, if you understand what I mean. A little bit of lift. And again, you don't have to go crazy. And that will do for me. I'm happy enough with that. I'm going to come down and get this in. Because that colour is really going to just make this painting pop. So I'm going to go with some cadmium yellow and lots of Naples yellow. This is quite a wet mix now as well. Just to get it covered, okay? Now a touch of burnt sienna as well. This is kind of, let's say, the medium kind of undercoat, if you will. This is sort of the undercoat colour that I'm putting in. I'm really looking forward to using the palette knife on this in a moment, because that's when you're going to see everything just jump off of this canvas. We get some cadmium yellow there. I hope you're enjoying this so far. I hope you're just relaxing there, wherever you are, and just chilling out, watching this, and getting some hints and tips. And as I always say to people, you know, when I'm painting these tutorials, even if you don't get any ad advice or information or hints and tips, at least even if I give you a little bit of inspiration to grab a paintbrush, and make, make a start, then that's good enough for me. I've done my job. So if you're sitting there looking at this and you're thinking, I might get my brushes out and do a bit of painting, then 
that makes it all worth it for me. It means I've done something right. That's all that matters, isn't it? Giving someone a little bit of confidence. That's really all that matters for me. So I have a nice base colour in there now. That's not bad. I know I came up a little bit higher, but we can mess around with this and have a bit of fun later on. What I'm now going to do is take a fan brush. A nice fan brush, if I have one. I should have one here somewhere. There we go. Let's start putting some soft shades on this. I'm going to get some burnt cyanide and some Naples yellow and some white. And then a touch of cadmium. I'm going to just start adding rough layers of this colour here and there, especially up here. You see that? I'm almost kind of softening this in, going up and down, up and down, into that tree line up there, okay? And you may not see this initially, right away, but I'm just kind of putting in some dark areas here and there. Little grass, that's what I'm doing. And look, you can go and flick it upwards as well. So what I'm doing now is I'm kind of focusing on the slightly darker shades of the colour. And then I put my bright colours in between. Does that make sense? So just very sort of loose, very messy. You see, I'm just kind of flicking it left and right, going around in little circles here and there, just making it very rough and very loose. That's that's what you want to achieve, achieve a very kind of a loose, because this type of a landscape, nothing is going to be in perfect symmetry. You're going to have, it's just going to go everywhere where it wants. So just be very, very random with your brush. That's the word I'm looking for, random. This is really just the very beginnings of this, and you can even soften it in, look. Soften it, scrape it, do anything you want. Just have a bit of fun and make it look very random and very messy, almost. You can see now how I've dulled it down a bit. We've actually then added some texture as well, haven't we? Just in simple little steps. Very, very simple. Having fun with your brush. Now, I'm going to come over here and just put a nice dark in here. This is going to be actually a nice mound of turf. So let's just get a very dark color. Fill this in. Now I, I don't really need to use a fan brush for this, but as I have it in my hand, I'm just going to use it to fill in. And then we'll get some nice turf in here in a moment. And actually, while well, I have that colour, I'm going to put some of that nice dark colour across here. Just wherever you see those little dark shades coming in, pop a little bit of it in, look. A little touch of it here and there. Okay. Now it's beginning to take a little shape, isn't it? I love a painting when it gets to this stage because you can begin to see everything coming together. And you almost know it's going to turn out nice, can't you? By looking at it, you almost have that feeling that this is going to be a nice one. I love when this happens. Sometimes for me, what I enjoy most is a simple landscape like this. You can get so much pleasure from it and people really see it and they look at it and they think, wow. But they don't know how quickly you had that done, do they? And that's what I love about the landscapes like this. It's just, you take a brush and you just pop a little colour through here and there, you see? I'm just wiggling my brush now, okay? I'm wiggling the tip of my fan brush up and down. Without I'm, I'm not flicking. 
I'm keeping it on the canvas and just wiggling. And you see where you get that lovely rough, soft feeling. It almost feels like pastels, doesn't it? Oh, I'll get more maple jello. And also be very careful when you're doing something like this because I can very easily overdo this, very easily, if I'm not careful. So I don't want to go crazy with all of this just yet. So I'm just stopping and looking every now and then. Have I got enough? Have I not got enough? I'm going to try some cadmium yellow with white. I want to get that real proper bright glow across the land in this. You see that lovely bright glow we had there? Here and there, just here and there. And look, you can flick it, you can dab it. It's all just to create a certain feeling in your painting. I'm gonna put a little dab of it off in the background as well, look. Just get some nice light areas going. And create some nice bright grasses. What I find is sometimes not thinking too much about it can really make a difference. So some people will stop and they'll think about every single brush stroke as they're going along. I just go crazy and just pop it in like this and see what happens. It's very simple to fix it if you make a mistake, trust me. But it's just a wonderful technique, it really is. Now, so how's that? A nice rough looking landscape. I'm going to pop in my big blob of turf over here. I'm going to get some burnt umber, lots of thick burnt umber, and we have just simple turf. A big mound of turf for burning on the fire. Pop it in like that. And take some black with that as well. So look, lots of little flicks with your brush. Create some nice little bits of turf or bog wood and all that kind of stuff. Again, a simple impression is all you need. Then I go to a smaller brush and I just start popping in a couple of smaller bits here and there. Well, just to find some of them, look. That's all you need to do to find them. Little blobs, that's all you need to worry about. Because it's so random, you're not going to make out too much detail in all of this. I could probably get a bigger brush, but I don't mind. I'll just keep going like this. It's just fine. A small little flat brush would be ideal for this. I do have one, but I'm just too lazy to go and pick it up. While I have this in my hand, I'll just use this. I like to be honest on this TV show, well, not TV show, but on this channel. I like to be just honest when I'm painting and tell you what, I, what I'm thinking. I think some people may like that. It's a little bit of honesty for a change. I like just to be honest with people, especially when it's painting. A lot of artists out there, they, don't, they only tell you what they think you want to hear. But... I'll tell you sometimes, you know, if I don't like it, just take it off with a bit of tissue paper or whatever. Um, I don't kind of try to sound too professional, if you understand what I mean, and too technical with painting, because for me, I think people may get quite overwhelmed if you start talking too technical. I've often watched kind of videos myself on YouTube of painters and you know, they use lots of different technical terms and I just find myself getting quite bored, to be quite honest. 
All they want to see is someone painting and being honest, tell you what they're doing as they're going, and just be very honest about themselves and in painting. And try not to pretend like you know everything because I don't certainly, I certainly don't know everything to do with painting. And I don't think I ever will. And that's just me being honest. But I just like to paint. And I like to show everybody else how I paint. That's all it's about. Now, there we go. Soften that in underneath. Job done. Let's put a little bit of grass in front of it like that. Just popping in here and there. Just to help sit that down just a little bit. And there we are. And how was that so far? I think I'll put in a small little fence post, fence post off in the distance. There is one there, a very small one. And then I'll call this part one. We'll come back on part two and take our time with the cottage because I don't want to, to be getting um, bored of this. So I'm just going to take my time with it. Pop a little bit of a fence in over there off in the distance. Just a little look, a little impression of a small fence. I don't want to be cutting off the background from the foreground, so I'm being careful. I'm not going to do too much of it. Just a little bit here and there. And then just suggest a little string between it or something, just to give it a little bit of something. And I'm going to call that, I think, part one finished. What I might, what I might do is maybe just to give it more of an impact, I might just take some yellow and some white and just put a little dab of that with my palette knife along here and there, look. And just sort of loosely scrape it, creating some light. You see what I mean? I'm just kind of pulling it on and I'm just sort of dragging it up and down, almost softening it through. Just to create a little bit of light here and there. And I think that's fine. I don't want to overdo all of this. There we go. And my friends, I am calling that part one finished. I think we'll just relax and we'll take our time then with part two, yes? What I might do is just maybe soften some of them out at the tip of my fan brush. Just to soften them away a little tiny bit, those lights and some of those darks, just let them kind of blend back inwards slightly. How about that look? Creating just a little bit of mystery in there. And there we go. Let me fix the exposure on this camera and I'm going to turn the camera to myself and I'll say thank you so much for watching part one. Um, I'll be right back with part two. Little cottage, take our time and we'll see what this looks like when it's finished. I'm quite happy. Thank you so much. I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, if you have any questions, please do just ask. Don't be shy. You can leave a comment or you can email me directly. And don't forget to subscribe, please. Thank you so much. I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere.